against unbelievers. 
based on what we've been saying. He has to be morally and legally, right? Now, a little comic relief for you. I know that it didn't happen this way, but it sounds to me like he says, stop your crying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Did anybody else think that? Stop your crying, John. So, yeah, he's definitely emotional. But it does say one of the 24 elders told John to stop crying. Why do you think he told him to stop? He knew the answer. Because as we know now, Jesus had achieved the victory over sin and gained the right to open the scrolls and to crack the seven seals, right? The elder identified Jesus in two ways in this verse. He identified him as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Why is that important? That's where the Messiah comes from, tribe, tribe of Judah. <laughs> Kingly authority, what else? I, keep, I kept saying two words. Morally and legally. He now has legal authority because he is the only one from the tribe of Judah that they could be talking about. Okay? And the prophecy and what's been uh, put into the place of the covenant uh, of God and the Jews is that this would happen, which gives him legal authority. When the patriarch Jacob blessed his son, he called his son Judah a lion's cub, and he predicted that the scepter would not depart from him. That was a um, prophecy of the fact that the lion of the tribe of Judah would keep the scepter. Make sense? Legal authority. This prediction anticipated the arrival of a descendant of Judah who would rule as king. Now, Revelation 5.5, 5, which we read um, just a little bit ago, uh, also signifies that it's from the root of David. The root of David is the source of King David's power and his kingdom. Okay? Again, establishing legal, rightful ownership. All right? Only Jesus, David's rightful descendant and heir to the throne of Israel, was legally entitled, entitled to open the scrolls and launch the judgment. says at the end, he is worthy to open the scrolls and its 
important also.
Okay? Again, representative there of the whole Trinity. Yeah. All right? The Lamb of God steps forward because he is legally and morally capable to do it. And he is the only one. Isn't that cool? He had the moral and the legal as a lawful king, as morally right. Jesus will return to earth after God unleashes his judgment on sin. By the way, the seven seals are God's seven judgments. Okay? We're going to describe that more and learn more about that when we get to chapter 19. All right. So as the lamb who died to provide forgiveness for sinners, Jesus has the right to judge those who turn away from him and his offer of forgiveness. He has the legal right to judge. So he is the one that can open the scroll. So as the one with both legal and moral qualifications to open the scroll and break its seals, Jesus stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of God. I don't know. If I was John, I'd be like, I gotta go take that. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, you probably you probably couldn't look away. That's gotta be amazing to see. Right? Somebody read. So Jesus is the rightful king, the rightful and only savior. Only. Someone read verse 8. So, when he took the scroll, that was God giving him authority to open the scroll, or open the seals, and they fell down before him, each one had a heart, and they all had gold bowls. What's going on? Anybody? So, Jesus took the scroll, the four creatures who are holy, right, prostrate themselves, the elders prostrate themselves, each elder held a harp and golden bowls full of incense. Tell me about that. So the 